So everyone knows the chain rule from single variable calculus. We need to develop a chain rule now using partial derivatives. So let's consider a function uh, f, which is a function of two variables only for simplicity. Um, I will write down what's called the total differential of f. So that will be denoted as df. That's going to be the value of f at x plus dx, y plus dy, uh, minus the value of f at x and y. Okay? So it tells you how f is changing when you change both x and y. Okay. Can we write that in terms of partial derivatives? Uh, we can if we group these terms a little bit differently. We can write this, say, as um, f of x plus dx, y plus dy, minus f of x, y plus dy, um, plus, I can cancel out this f of x, y plus dy term by writing this as f of x, y plus dy, and then minus our f of x, y. Okay? So it's the same expression. The, uh, the minus f of x, y plus dy cancels the plus f of x, y plus dy. Uh, these look like partial derivatives. Okay? So the definition of the partial derivative is that you hold y fixed, and then you take the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x. So this is the same formula for the partial derivative except holding y fixed at y plus dy. But we're considering dx and dy to be small quantities. They're called uh, infinitesimals. They're as small as we would like them to be. So evaluated at y plus dy and y plus dy is the same thing as evaluating at y. And then f of x plus dx minus f of x is just the partial derivative of f with respect to x times this uh, infinitesimal dx. Okay, so that's from the first term. And similarly for, similarly for the second term, this is just the partial derivative of f with respect to y times dy. Okay, so you view dx and dy are our h here, and the limit h goes to zero. You just view these things as very small uh, uh, dx's, very small numbers, like an h, and uh, one is taking the limit in the mind. Okay? So this is df. So how does this help us with the uh, chain rule? Well, let's say, for instance, f is a function of x, which is also a function of t and a function of y, which is also a function of t. So we want to, this is now, f is now, can be viewed as a multivariable function of x and y, or it can be viewed as a single variable function of t, right? So f can be viewed as just a function of t. So we can ask, what is the derivative of f with respect to t? Okay, so that's the normal, a uh, single variable derivative. Well, we know what df is, so this is a delta f in the numerator. We can divide through by a dt in the denominator, a delta t, right? And then if we divide this expression by dt, we get partial of f with respect to x dx dt plus partial of f with respect to y dy dt. And that's the chain rule for um, partial derivatives. So it's a little bit different, right, than for normal uh, regular derivatives. You have two terms. So usually for a chain rule, you like to think about canceling the numerator and the denominator. You can't do that here, right? 
you have to first differentiate f with respect to x, and then you take the derivative of x with respect to time, and then you have to add that to differentiating f with respect to y, and then take the derivative of y with respect to time. So you have two terms, a little bit different. Let me show you a particular example. It's called the uh, material derivative. It is uh, what you get in uh, considering the um, fluid mechanics, the equations governing the velocity of a fluid flow. Um, it shows up then in the governing equation, which is the Navier-Stokes equation. The idea here then is that you have, following a fluid particle, you have its velocity, dx dt, x is the position of the fluid element, the fluid particle, is equal to the velocity, which is both a function of time, varying in time, but it's also a function of position, which um, depends on time, okay, because the, the particle is flowing in the fluid. So when you, write, when you derive the Navier-Stokes equation, you need to derive the acceleration of this fluid particle. That would be the second derivative of its position with respect to time, d squared x dt squared. In order to differentiate the right-hand side uh, with respect to t, we need to use the chain rule. So it's the partial derivative of u with respect to t. That's the first variable. And then plus the partial derivative of u with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t. But dx dt is equal to u. So this is partial u with respect to t plus u times partial of u with respect to x. And that's called the material derivative. Okay, two terms, partial u with respect to t plus u, partial u with respect to x. When you generalize this to three dimensions, you get the first two terms in the famous Navier-Stokes equation for fluid flow. A very important equation for, say, uh, mechanical engineers or aerospace engineers. Okay, so let me summarize. I'm talking about the chain rule for multi uh, functions of more than one variable. Um, to get to the chain rule, I considered consider the differential df, which I show you is equal to partial f with respect to x dx plus partial f with respect to y dy. So that f, if f is a function of both x and y, and x and y are a function of time, then we can consider what is the derivative of f with respect to time. This is the single variable derivative. It's equal to partial f with respect to x dx dt plus partial f with respect to y dy dt. This is the chain rule. Then I showed you an application of the chain rule for computing the first two terms in the Navier-Stokes equation. That's called the material derivative. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.